today I'm going to teach you how to make two pretty quick Christmas decor items. This is a Star Santa ornament and it's similar to our Star Snowman except this part is sewn out of wool. Um, I hand dyed this red wool and you could probably use any kind of red wool. You could probably use any kind of fabric, actually, when I show you what we're going to do. And then I'm going to show you how to make the trees. Somebody, I guess, some one of you commented on how to make the big light up lock tree. It's going to be the same method I show you with this littler guy. Mine, actually, we're going to make a little bit bigger one. Um, but it will, same thing here. There's a crystal knob here for the base. These can be ornaments or they can stand up. So let me um, give you some quick little ornament tutorials here. So we'll start with our little Santa. He's, he takes longer than the tree. So I'm gonna do a green one. So as you can see, I'm not gonna take you to the sewing machine because we all know how to do that. I kind of drew a star on this wool. This is some green wool that I dyed. Oh, look, I missed here. I, um, and then I kind of free sew it and just cut it out. And do not worry, we will. I will show you how to turn it right side out, and then we're gonna hide where we do that so that no one sees it. So I'm just cutting it out. I always save all my scraps because you never know where you could use them. You know, isn't there some kind of internet joke about saving all your scraps? Um, so we'll cut out our star. And you don't wanna cut too close to your stitching, obviously, or, you know, it won't work. Um, Right in here, you want to do a little clippy. All right, so we got him cut out. I'm going to put him to the side so you can see what I'm doing. So the face is going to end up not up here in the top like the snowman did, but in the middle. So I want you to separate your two sides. Just make a little snip. And then we're going to turn it right side out. I don't know how gracefully I can do this. Um, I just stick my fingers in here and then I'm going to use my little stuffing stick to help finish turning it the rest of the way. We're going to turn it right to the key to making these, especially if you're not using a wool fabric. Um, it's going to be, I stuff them with core wool so that they have wool on the inside. So I have this little stuffing stick. It, it has a pointy side, but for turning, I don't want to go all the way through my star. Just shove their pieces out here. I didn't tell you what else you were going to need to do this, but we can walk through it. You're going to need a smidge of red for his mouth, just like any Santa. Some blue for his eyeballs. And doesn't that look funny right now? So, And then you need some face color for his face. And we're going to stuff it. Um, let's get it up in the points. You Again, you don't have to stuff this hard, but I'm gonna tell you this is so much faster than making a snowman. I do like to make the star snowman for real. And these guys this way, I don't know why, it's just the way I do it. I do like the asymmetry I get when I'm free sewing the stars. And then these guys don't have an armature at all. It's just the fast, a quick way to make some ornaments if you need to get some done. So you can see it's kind of firm, but not really. I stuff all the legs pretty good first. And then as we start getting up here, you don't want to overstuff around the hole. No reason to. We just want to make sure that each leg has enough stuffing in it so it's not flat. You can see he's getting full. I have a big basket of core wool on the other side of the camera if you see me reaching across. Rather than having it loose all over the table, <laughs> contain these little pieces. So almost you want it full but not too full you don't want it poking out all right so he's all full right see how it's just a little bit full now 
One mistake you can make with this is to make his head too big. Then he doesn't look right. I mean, he's okay, but you don't want to make his head too big. So we're going to take, I'm going to take some flesh color and stab it in. Remember, we're going right into that wool, so it's going to adhere perfectly. So you could use polar fleece because it's kind of fuzzy. You can use all kinds of different fabric. Just, I mean, linen. You could probably even use cotton. It'd give a totally different look. Um, prints, you could use a print, be cute, like a little Christmas print, a little Christmas print Santa would be cute. I just happened to hand dye this wool, I buy bolts of wool by, you know, a whole bolt at a time, and then I take it out and dye it when I'm dyeing my regular wool in the color of the, the color of the day, whatever I'm dyeing. I was obviously thinking Santa's here. Or trees. I was definitely thinking trees. So as skinny as you can make it. Because again, you don't want his head, his face too big. So the other thing about using wool is it stretches a little bit. So I'm pulling it over. The idea is to seal up where you cut. And we just did that. So let's use a pen tool. We've got two thirty-eight star spirals in here. You guys, I got some cool wool in. I got some samples and I really like them. So I'm, I ordered full on amounts. So I can put them on the website. We got some, I'll show you one of them here. We're going to work with one of them today. But I'm adding some red glitzy stuff and some green glitzy stuff. And then amber and yellow and, oh, we'll see what else did I add. I can't remember. But definitely that. But the most exciting thing for all y'alls. I have a new core wool supplier and it's awesome. It's roving form and I'm able to keep the price. My cheap $1 an ounce core wool the same, which is really awesome because, you know, I like to keep felting affordable. It doesn't have to be an expensive hobby. So I'm able to keep the price the same, even though I'm shipping it in. It's crazy. All right, we have our little we have our little thing here, my little oval. Now you know me and my skewers. A toothpick will work for this too because we're making a tiny nose, tiny. The color I'm using here is hollyhock, and I'm gonna wrap it. Remember wrapping, keep it flat. I'm wrapping it. This is small. This is not like a gnome nose. Almost not much thicker than the width of the skewer. In fact, if I get out a ruler, I had to drive today, so I'm a little bit stiff driving and I do not get along. So it's a quarter of an inch. The bottom of his nose is a quarter of an inch. I had to go to Costco, but it's awesome because Costco loads my stuff for me. And right now the back of my truck is open, so John will unload my stuff for me. <laughs> Still not allowed to lift heavy things. So I'm just attaching his little nose on here. It's just a tiny little nose. Okay, then we're going to make two little pillows. And this is not a complicated Santa. That's why we're going to show you two things today. Because, you know, the holidays are coming and you guys got to get felting. You just take your little pillow and put it on. Let's make another little pillow. Don't want these to stick out too far. They're just little ornaments. Again, if you make this face too big, it's kind of funny looking. I was inspired to make these by 
a primitive sewing pattern that I saw. I was like, oh, I bet I could felt this. It would be way cool. Okay, so you, well, we have our two little pillows and our little nose, and we're going to take just a sheer amount and lay it over the whole top. And tuck it all in, and you know that's going to give you your glue to make these all look like one piece. And now let's got a little piece of somebody's farm there. I take another little pillow and just put it right here. Just build up his little face down here. Just a little bit. Just a little to tie it into his cheeks. No, a bunch of you have been messaging me about Zoom classes. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. You know, maybe Mr. Videographer over there can figure it out and teach me how to do it. Because I don't know. I don't know how to do online classes. It's something I need to figure out. Can't be much different than doing this, except I get to answer questions. All right. So see, we tied that all in, smoothed it all out. I kind of like, make, you know how I make the smile where his little mouth is going to go. And then I think, so I have this white here. It has a little bit of glitz in it, and I'm not going to worry about that. So we're going to take it over here and make a little half circle. This is a little bit different than the other guy I did, the way I've been doing this one. I just wad it up. Might need a little bit more over there. I don't know where you guys are, but man, it is cold outside. It's nice, but it's cold. Oof. It was 18 degrees this morning. All my waters were frozen. I had to break them all so everybody could get a drink. Not that they acted like they cared if they needed a drink, but in case they did. In case they did. Now, if you want to make nostrils, you can. You don't have, they're tiny. They're just like needle width. So, so we have this nifty little face coming on. I'm going to felt this just a little bit. It's nice and smooth. I don't think I told you everything you needed. So you need face color, obviously. You need some white. You need some blue. This is that, this is the DHG water color. It's called water. I love this blue for Santa eyes. Let's just tuck it in. Tuck a little ball in here for his eyeballs. Let's tuck this in. Don't do too much. Keep moving up. Sorry about that. Cannon just went in to get a cup of coffee. He's, he doesn't even know I'm going to say this to you. He's going to go, what? The coffee center changed again? <laughs> yes, it did. I, keep ha I had a little fight with the last coffee maker that my husband bought. And I don't want it anymore, so I got a new one. All right. Add a little red in the smile. So isn't he cute so far? Let's put some eyelids on him. You know how I just make a little roll? 
kind of roll it between your fingers. So I have a space between his eye and his nose. It's, the Santa looks different. And then I'm going to take the extra over the top of his nose. And let's... Because we've done enough faces. You guys should be getting good at this. Let's... Remember, where how you shape that eyelid can be if he's mad or if he's happy or if he's sleepy. So kind of play with how you want him. And then I like to just smooth him out a little bit. Poke it this way. And a lot of this is going to disappear. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving, good holiday with family. All right, so got a little face. Now you're gonna dig into your bag of blue face locks or whatever kind of locks you have. I don't even know what's in here, let's look. All right. You know how I tell you, when you get wash locks, you pull them apart from the tip. That's, that one's too short. All right, and this is too long, so I'm going to half them. I'm going to lay them on here. I have half down here, and then I'm going to fold them over. You don't need a ton of locks to do this. That smells really good, Cannon. You found the coffee in the drawer. Yes. <laughs> okay, because I hid it from you. New Keurig machine. New everything machine. It's good coffee. I found a new coffee, and I ordered some more today. It's made by a local roaster called Blandersnatch. <laughs> the name of the coffee was funny, so I bought it, and it's actually really good coffee. Try some next time I get out here. Mm -hmm. Really good. No, it's smooth. No bitterness at all. Oh, it's good. So I'm just shingling them on. This is called shingling. When you lay a piece of fiber on a project, like we're doing, and you find the center of it and poke it on and then pull it down, that's called shingling. Because you can see we're making layers, like shingles lay on your roof. This is much more enjoyable than putting on shingles, so let me tell you. Although you won't find me going on anybody's roof anytime soon. <laughs> I think I would get in trouble. Uh-oh. Rip is taking exception to something that's happening outside. He's keeping us safe. He's growling. Fun rip story, if you guys want a, a dog story. My kids were here with their husky puppy. And they taught her to ring a bell to go outside. Something we didn't teach Rip how to do. But on the third day they were here, he was ringing the bell to go outside. He's a smart dog. He's the one smart dog. Just from watching her, it's pretty crazy. See, I'm building up his beard. Again, it's not a super huge beard, but I like all this kind of loose. That piece is a little bit long, so I'm just going to tack it in there. We'll shape his beard in a minute. Just got to get all the pieces on first. And while you're, while you're grabbing little beard pieces, 
you gotta look for ones that make a good mustache. So I go to the bottom of the cheek. One more piece over here. I like the cut end down, tuck it in, fold it over. All right, we've got our little beard on. It's gonna be cute. And then I kind of just shape it down. Now let me find some suitable, I'm looking for suitable mustache pieces here. That one has too much staining. So you can shingle this, you know, back and forth, or you can just put one one way, one the other way. You don't need too much and find the center. I'm not going to be all fancy on this little guy. Because he is. He's just a little tiny Santa. Put his little mustache on. If you do them, I think a print one would be very cool. Might have to do that. into my fabric stash and see what's in there. We all have stashes. We all have a fabric stash. I know you do. I think I'm involved in the game He Who Dies With The Most Craft Supplies Wins. Alright, so now we're going to work up here for just a second. You're just going to find some random locks. I let those ones hang loose. Let's just tuck these on. Let those blend right into his mustache. And then we'll tie this one in. Tuck it in. This is a fast little project today. is a twofer oh, because the holidays are coming all right let's do this i think this is the spot i work the most because i like it to look like he's smiling when you hold it up And then, you know me, me and my blush. Let's give him a little bit of color to his cheeks. A little on his nose, a little bit on his cheeks. He's been outside here in Oregon. I put a little on his eyelash. There, we got that done. Then, don't mess with those tiny pieces of black. Let's just use a little bit of Sharpie. Remember, tap it. Tap it to make your pupil. If you try to draw it, you're going to end up with a mess. I like to go along the top of his eye just a little bit. Little pupil. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. And then the last thing this guy needs, here, let me get rid of some of these locks, is a little bit of white around his brim, where his hat would technically be. So this you need to strip. And I, this one is, let's tuck that in. It's subjective as to how fat you make it, width-wise. I just like put it on like this. I don't felt this a whole lot because I'm just wrapping it. And it's just the suggestion of a hat. So I'm going around.
You can see I'm dragging my needle along the bottom of it. Catches those loose white fibers. You know how I am about my white showing out on my dark and my dark showing on my light. And I'm felting it from the edge. Once you get it on, you can give it a little bit of pokes. The reason I like to felt this stuff a lot, this sparkly stuff has got a merino in it. And then if I start felting it, I'm going to have all these holes and, you know, minimal felting is the best. But you do want it to stay on if you're putting it on a Christmas tree because it can get caught on pine needles and pull off. So you want it felted on enough that that will not totally happen. Sometimes I feel like I need to give a felting needle with every Christmas ornament I've So got all the whites. So the last thing, well, it's the second to last. Let's tuck in some of the stray fuzzies on his beard. Shape his beard up a little bit. Isn't he cute? Um, so on to finish that. Oh, I gotta make the ball. I gotta make a ball for his hat. But I put I glue these little these little bells onto his arms and legs, and then I add this little rusty wire. You can add a twine. You could do a fishing line. So it's subjected to what you want to do. I'm going to do red bells on this green guy. I do have a pre-cut little wire here. And when you're using wool, this is pretty, pretty, um, the, wo the weave on it's loose. So I can just stick the wire right through it. And then we will add his red bells in a minute. You don't need to watch me glue bells on. Everybody can glue bells on. Okay, so this one's a little bit thick right here. You probably got a big piece of core wool right there. Just work the wire through. Don't be super aggressive about it. You'll bend your wire. Work your wire through. Just bend it up. So he'll have red bells and I'll give him a ball here. Let's make a little ball for the top of his hat. Just need a little piece of white. A little pom-pom. It can be well felted. It can be just a little blob, but you want it to look like a pom-pom. You don't want to make it too big and then you're going to attach it to the top of his hat. And we'll show you what he looks like with his bells on at the end here. So I'm going to move to the next project. So see so you got Nifty little Santas. Okay, next project. We're going to make this little tree. All right, so to make these nifty little wool trees, again, this is a quick and easy project. Um, it's a really good way to use up scraps. They don't have to be green. You know, this has a little white in it. Um, again, and it has the crystal bases. I think I got those on Amazon. I am not sure. I cannot remember. I have a whole, I have a whole case of them. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so I have, again, this is a little piece of undyed wool. It's just like a, a wool fabric. I sewed ha like two sides of a triangle. And you don't sew the bottom. I'm just going to turn it right side out. I had it right side out once, and I thought maybe you needed to see how to do it. And let's poke it in. And again, we're going to use core wool. 
So you need wool fabric. You sew a quick triangle. Oh my goodness, keep going. Doesn't want to go. <laughs> I got a little bit over excited here. Come on. All right, so we need the point. Get the point out as much as you can. And then turn it right side out. So again, we're using core wool. You know, if you really wanted to, you could use fiber fill. I do that sometimes, but if you're going to felt into it, you really want it, you know, to stick to what's underneath. And the best way to do that is to stuff it with core wool. And then it's environmentally friendly and fire retardant. On top of that, I'm stuffing this a little bit more firm, as you can see, than I did the star because we want it to stand up. Can you shove that towards me a little bit? So you got your little tree going on here. I'm gonna stuff it all in here. If I get out of the frame, I'm sorry. I'm working it around. Probably only one more piece. So now, so we have the stuffed, right? And you're thinking, how on earth is she going to attach that? So what I did is I, I like to use carpet thread or upholstery thread. I have a double threaded needle. And I am just going to do a basting stitch in and out, in and out, all the way around. I'm using a doll needle. You don't have to. It's faster to use a doll needle because it's so long. Just go in and out. Doll needles have so many uses. You know we're gonna we're gonna pull that tight so your stitches do not need to be super close together i'm just in a running stitch basting running whatever you want to call it they said this is a multimedia project so then we're gonna pull it tight you can see i used black thread on this tree too because it doesn't really matter now, when you buy these knobs, they come they come in a box with two... This, these ones came with two screws, a shorter one and a longer one. Probably because, you know, people's drawers, those, the width of the wood. I like the longer screw, and I screw it in. You don't have to, but you'll see the purpose here. And we want to make a little hole. Kind of try and find mostly the center. And we're going to pull this tight. We're going to pull it tight, and I wrap... Let's try and tuck. Wait a minute. Let me try and tuck all this wool in. Pull it tight. Kind of work it around. You want it as close to center as you can get it. Or it'll look like a Grinch tree. And then take a big stitch. Got to get it tight. So once it's in tight, you can kind of move it around. And you can move your gathers around. Because sometimes they end up all on one side. Can you see how that happened here? Just move those around. And then just knot it off. You can wrap it around a couple times if you want, but just knot this off. I know you didn't know you were going to be sewing today, did you? sewing by hand no less all right so we're all knotted off let's cut that and now the fun begins so I'm gonna see, first I'm gonna see if he'll stand up and he does we're good all right so he stands up so in my bag of tricks here I have what is this this is some alpaca from a blending pack I have some locks that I dyed. There's some more alpaca. 
This is Firestar, which is shiny nylon that was all dyed at the same time. And this is that new fiber I was telling you about. How fun is this? This is Merino and Firestar in pine green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this alpaca. I'm going to tease it apart. What we want to do is we want... Let me get rid of some of this stuff. So we're just gonna start up here. I like to start at the top. It might be more comfortable for you to start at the bottom. You can see I just wrapped it around. Like I said, this is a pretty quick thing. This is how I did the big tree. The tree is huge the big giant tree. Um, so first I covered it in the green. You can see I'm just wrapping right now. And we're gonna felt it on. That might look white, but it's actually very pale, very pale green. Now this right here, I, I missed a spot, but it doesn't have to be the alpaca. Well, let's use this color. I'm gonna cover this up. These are pretty abstract. That's why they're so fun. You need these to be pretty felted. Now, alpaca doesn't like to felt really well, so this probably wasn't my best choice to show you because it's going to take me a bit to get it all felted in. But we're going to add locks, which will help hold it on. I like to wrap it because it gives you the stripes. And if you wrap it on an angle, it's even more, gives you more movement. Let's see right here. But I'm going to switch up. I'm going to switch. I'm going to use some of this. I'm going to switch it up. Some of this merino sparkle. a pretty color it's like pine green and it has like rainbow colors of the tinsel don't have it in yet so I can't put it in the shop yet but it is coming they're pretty quick so we'll see how fast I get it so I'm gonna work on this for a while and um, I'll be right back all right so I have been felting on this for a bit and you can see it's pretty, it's pretty felted in, but we're going to make it felted more. All right, so now, for those of you that were asking about my big light-up tree, what I do for that, what I did for that tree, is I took my locks, one lock at a time. And I'm not going to do it for this one, but one lock at a time, and felted it on. All the way up that tree. It took me a really long time. Um... But before I felted the locks on, I wrapped that tree with LED twinkle lights. So they're under the locks. Um, this isn't big. I was going to show you, but it's not big enough, even for my small strands of lights that I have. But you can see I'm, I'm following. If I put these locks on. I'm following the pattern of the stripes that I added on here. So let's, and I'm going to continue it right here. See, I ended right there and I'm going to just be pretty random. You want to felt them on pretty good. This is going to give you some texture to your tree. I mean, if you want to coat your tree in locks, you can do that. I did that. I've done that before. Like I said, with the big guy. And you don't have to use all 
same color greens. I got a bunch of different ones here. So you can leave them kind of sticking up. Here's some better ones. Here's some like limey green ones. And these ones are a little bit felted together, but I'm just ripping them apart. And you don't have to continue them like even. You can just, just be random. I'll put them on there random. These look really good in the middle of a table. And then you can put locks white locks on your table for snow. They need to be super white though. So the locks are, so remember what I'm felting on here is not necessarily something we normally felt with a lot. I've got alpaca, which doesn't felt super well, but it does felt. And I've got merino, stellina, merino, um, not merino, stellina. Merino Firestar. And then I've got straight Firestar. This is straight nylon. And I wrapped it on here. And just tacked it into the wool underneath. The wool underneath is what's helping us keep it on. So we made the Santa. And I said you could use other fabrics for the Santa. You probably could. I don't know how this would work out if you didn't use a wool base. You can see it doesn't really matter what color wool you use. I just use white. Okay, so we got our little locks on there. So it doesn't have to be too much. Put those away. Put them out of the way. So now let's decorate our tree. I found these tinsely, tinsely looking, tinsely looking pipe cleaners. How fun are they? And I'm trying to decide what I want to do. All right, I'm going to twist two of them together to give them a little bit beefier. Not super twist, just a little bit of twist. To give them a little bit beefier look for tint, like garland. And then two more. Kind of attach them. You know, sometimes we have to make up our own decor because the craft stores don't have what we want. So I've got a little tinsely garland here and I'm gonna come up here at the top. And then you have these locks. You can glue it, but why glue it when you have wool glue? Just tack it on. Back it on and then we're gonna wrap it. Let's see, do I wanna go that way or do I wanna go the opposite way? I think I wanna go the opposite way of the locks. How fun is this? Go the opposite way of the locks. And then when you get down here, you can just tuck it under some locks. Let's felt it on. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm probably going to drag some locks over it to make it look a little bit more coherent. All right, now, and then I have some red, just basic pit berries here. I haven't even unwrapped. Still haven't found my sparkly ones that I got somewhere. I'm going to reach over for it cutter wire cutter don't use your scissors on this you'll ruin them and we are going to I'm going to wrap this around just a little bit to secure it and I'll probably come back with some locks I'm going to follow the tinsel that I put on here I hope you got, I hope I didn't go out of the frame just now following the tinsel that I put on there I'm actually going to wrap this around the base because it is wire. Let's just go around the base. Let me see what I've got going on up here. 
So you could actually put a little star up here, attach it to this. So you have a star. You can attach anything up there, a little bauble. You can, and there's a bag of round ornamenty things right there. <laughs> Let me see those. So a friend of mine brought me this bag of stuff. Let's see what's in here. Why not? Okay, I got silver, I got gold. I think we'll do a gold one. How fun is this? These are like little Christmas ornaments and we're gonna just string it on here. And then I'm gonna make it stand up. Maybe. See, creativity at work. How fun is that? I think I might tie a little bow around here, a little red bow at the top of this. So there you have it. Quick little tree ornament, quick little Santa. Um, can't wait to see what you guys do with this video. Thanks for joining me today while we felted our little Santa. You can see I added some bells and our little tree. I added the little red bow at the top. I hope you had a good time. Make these. Show me how they look. Go on to the Lion Gate Farm Southern Oregon felting group and post them. And then make sure if you're watching, click like and then subscribe because it really helps us out. If you need supplies, head over to the farm store at liongate.org. See you next week.